Today I've got a nice problem which is like presented in the form of a game and it comes from the 2006 North Macedonian Math Olympiad. So let's see what we have. We'll start by writing a natural number on the chalkboard and then we perform a transformation as follows. We erase the ones digit and then add four times the ones digit to the remaining number. And then the question is, is it possible to transform the number 13 to the 2006 into 2006 to the 13? So of course, both of these numbers are way too large to really do anything with. So the answer is probably no. And we just need to look for a way to show that this is in fact impossible. And I think probably the best way is to start with a couple of experiments. So let's do that. Let's maybe start with the number one, two, three. And let's maybe have this yellow arrow be our transformation. So let's notice, what do we do? We erase the ones digit, so we'll erase three, we'll multiply three by four, and add it to what remains, which is 12. So we'll do 12 plus three times four. Notice that gives us 24. Okay, so let's keep going. So for the next step, we'll erase four, we'll multiply that by four and add it to two. So we have two plus four times four, that's equal to 18. So I don't think we've seen enough to really see a pattern yet, but let's keep going. So what do we get next? So if we erase eight and multiply it by four, we get 32, adding to what remains is 33. Okay, good. Now let's go again. So we'll erase three, the ones digit, multiply it by four, that gives us 12, add it to the remaining three, that gives us 15. Okay, so what about next? So next we'll erase five, multiply it by four, that gives us 20, added to one is 21. Then after a couple more steps, something interesting thing happens. So let's see. We'll erase the one, multiply it by four, add it to two, that gives us six. And then the interesting part is that if we erase the ones digit here, you erase six, multiply it by four, and add it to the nothing remaining, meaning that we transform this back into 24. And we've created this nice loop. But since we've created this nice loop, any sort of pattern that we might see has got to be inside of this picture. Well, let's look at all of our numbers. We've got 123, 24, 18, 33, 15, 21, and 6. And what's true about all of those numbers? Well, they're, they're in fact all divisible by 3. So let's write that down. So all are multiples of three. In other words, they are congruent to zero mod three. So perhaps we won't need to use the notion of congruence mod n, but just in case we do, we'll get that on the board as an equivalence to being multiples of three or divisible by three. Okay, let's do another example. Let's start with 245. And I'm picking 245 because it's not a multiple of 3. So we can perhaps get some sort of idea for if there is some invariant under things that are not multiples of 3. Okay, so let's see. The first step, we'll erase the number five, multiply it by four, and add it to 24. So that'll be 24 plus 20, that gives us 44. Okay, and then the next step, we'll erase the four, multiply it by four, which is 16, add it to the four, so that'll give us 20. Okay, and then we'll erase the zero, multiply it by four, giving us zero, add it to the two, so that gives us two. Okay, and then from there we'll get eight pretty clearly because we just multiply by four. Once we get to a single digit number, it's equivalent to multiplying by four. And then eight will turn into 32, 
So let's write that down. So 32, and then finally 32 will turn into 11. That's because we erase two, multiply it by four, which gives us eight, add it to three, that's 11. And then the next number will be five, using the same rule again, and then five will take us all the way back to 20. So we've built a little loop right here. So if there's any pattern to be seen starting at 245, it's somewhere in this loop. Well, looking at this, keeping in mind that we noticed that all of these were multiples of three, can we see something true about all of these with respect to divisibility by three? So none of them are divisible by three, but they all give us a remainder of two when dividing by three. In other words, all of these are congruent to two modulo three. So if all of these are congruent to zero mod three, all of these are congruent to two mod three, then that tells us we have the following guess for the structure. And that is the transformation does not change what's called the residue modulo three. So the residue mod three is the congruence class mod three. So the residue of all of these numbers mod three is two. The residue of all of these numbers mod three is zero. So it seems like the transformation is not changing the residue mod three. So let's prove that as a claim and then we can apply that to our numbers over here. Hey everyone, before we finish this video, I'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons. The channel is possible because of their generous support. We'd like to turn off the ads on my second channel, Math Major, but to do so, we need to reach our goal of $1,000 per month on the Patreon. This will allow more people to access a higher quality experience and spread ad-free math education. So if you can chip in even a couple of bucks to help us reach our goal, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath or click the link in the description. If you can contribute $10 or more, you'll have your name in the credits at the end of each video. And if you can't contribute money, then please share and like this video. It really does help. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, but you've made it this far, you should go click the subscribe button. Okay, back to the video. So via some experimentation on the transformation described over there, we came up with the following conjecture, which we'll now prove. And that is, this transformation does not change the residue mod three. So let's introduce some notation. Let's say f is a function from natural numbers to natural numbers, and it is our transformation. And so next, let's take a number n, which is a natural number, but because it has something to do with taking off this ones digit, we probably want to expand it in decimal notation. So we'll write this as a0 plus a1 times 10 plus a2 times 10 squared plus all the way up to a k times 10 to the k. So the ones digit is clearly the a sub zero term. And maybe we should um, go ahead and write over here that a i are from the set zero to nine. So this is really the base 10 expansion. Okay, so now let's calculate the residue of n mod three, and then we'll also calculate the residue of f of n mod three. So let's notice that n is congruent to a zero plus a one plus a two plus all the way up to a k mod three. And that's using the standard fact that the residue mod three of a number is equivalent to its digit sum mod three. And that's exactly what we have here. And that it all boils down to the fact that 10 is congruent to one mod three and thus 10 to any power is congruent to one mod three. So let's maybe write that as 10 to the M is congruent to one modulo three. And this is gonna be for all natural numbers M maybe also including zero. Okay, so now let's apply the transformation. So we'll do f of n. And so we're applying it to this. So we're essentially deleting the ones digit 
and then everything else will be divided by 10 because that's the structure of this over here. If we delete the ones digit, but if it's not expanded like this, then we've essentially also divided it by 10. Then we're gonna multiply four to the ones digit and add it back in. So that's gonna give us something like this. We'll have four A zero plus A one plus A two times 10 plus A three times 10 squared all the way up to A K times 10 to the K minus one. But now let's reduce that mod three. And we'll note that we get exactly the same thing. A zero plus A one all the way up to A K modulo three. And that follows not only from this fact that we have written up here that 10 to the M is congruent to one mod three for all natural numbers m but also because 4 is congruent to 1 mod 3. Obviously if you divide 4 by 3 you get a remainder of 1. Just like if you divide 10 to the m by 3 you get a remainder of 1. So in the end what we see is that f of n the transformed number is congruent to the original number modulo 3. But that's exactly what we needed to prove this claim. So where will we go from here? Well, we need to find the congruence class of each of these mod three. But in fact, that's easier than it might seem. So notice that 13 to the 2006 is the same thing as one to the 2006 mod three. That's because 13 is one more than 12, which is a multiple of three. And that is one mod three. So we see that 13 to the 2006 is one mod three. And then next, we'll look at our other thing. So we've got 2006 to the 13. Well, notice that's the same thing as two to the 13. So two to the 13 mod three, because we can reduce the 2006. Notice the digit sum of 2006 is eight, which has a remainder of two when divided by three. And from here, it's actually not so hard. We can write this as two to the two, all to the six power times two to the one mod three. But notice two to the two is four, which is one mod three. So that means all of this is simply one, meaning our number 2006 to the 13 is in fact two modulo three. So what do we have? We have 13 to the 2006 is one mod three, whereas 2006 to the 13 is two mod three. But since this transformation keeps the congruence class mod three invariant, that means that this is impossible. In other words, it's impossible to transform one of these into the other. And that's a good place to stop.